Paris, the city of love, croissants, and poop? Yup, you heard that right. While Paris may be famous for its stunning art, romantic streets, and the Eiffel Tower, it's also become a bit too well known for something far less charming. A river full of human, well, let's just say waste. Yes folks, the legendary Seine, the river where lovers sail in boats, has been carrying more than just romance. It's been lugging around a whole lot of human poop. So next time you take a deep breath and say, ah, love is in the air, you might want to make sure that smell isn't something a bit funkier, and the stink doesn't stop there. The poop problem in Paris got so out of hand that the French government had to flush out a whopping $1.5 billion to clean it up. That's right, a billion and a half to stop the city of love from turning into the city of, well, you know. So before you grab your baguette and run off to enjoy a riverside stroll, let's take a deep dive into how Paris found itself in such deep shit, sorry, trouble, and what they're doing to clean it all up. How did this toilet tragedy begin? And more importantly, why did it get so bad? Let's break it down. Paris is an ancient city. When it was formed, it was designed for a low population. Currently, the sewerage system of this city is the same as it was in the Middle Ages. This sewerage system can handle poop from hundreds of people, thousands even. But the population in Paris is rapidly increasing every year. In fact, the population in Paris grew from 1 million to 3 million between 1800 and 1900. So while the city itself and the population in Paris are expanding, the sewerage system is struggling to keep up. Millions of people using the bathroom once or twice every day are the cause of this poop problem in Paris. The outdated sewerage system of Paris is the reason this city faced such an embarrassing, I mean alarming, poop problem. And it's not just humans, even animals, dogs especially, were equal contributors to this problem. But the dogs don't use bathrooms. No, they don't, right? The dogs were leaving turd landmines onto the streets and roads of Paris. Every second person in Paris owns a dog, and every dog has to poop twice a day. That's thousands of turd landmines just laying on the streets of Paris. Montmartre and Le Marais, the two iconic neighborhoods in Paris, were severely affected by this. Dog owners were not picking up after their pets, and the city's sanitation department was struggling to keep up with the demand. The smell was unbearable and the site was even worse. So why don't the government update the sewerage system? If Pooh Paris was expanding so rapidly, why did the government not improve the infrastructure? The sewerage. The government of France was scared that Paris would lose its beauty and glamour if they upgraded the sewerage system and the rest of the infrastructure. And not because they loved the turd and its smell, gross, but because Paris's streets were built during the Middle Ages. The narrow alleys and winding roads were designed for horse-drawn carriages and pedestrians, not for the massive sewer pipes needed to support a growing metropolis. There was just no way for the government to squeeze a modern sewer system into a medieval city, which was reasonable. No one likes a plumber to ruin the whole house trying to fit a pipe or fix a leak. So it was the same sort of problem just on a city-level scale. The government of France had to save the most iconic and historic buildings in the world, even at the cost of a $1.5 billion poop problem later. No one would have liked to see the Notre Dame Cathedral and the Louvre Museum damaged just because the government wanted to improve the living conditions of Parisians. It would be a tragedy, sacrificing a treasure of architectural and cultural heritage for an upgraded sewer system. There was simply no way for the government to dig up the streets and install new pipes without damaging the foundations of these ancient buildings. The only solution was for the Parisians to use face masks that they needed so earlier than even Corona's hit. Maybe wearing face masks during Corona was Parisians' idea, now that I think of it. Anyway, Paris was caught in a preservation versus progress issue. The city wanted to preserve its historic heritage and maintain its unique character. On the other hand, it needed to modernize its infrastructure to support a growing population. Both are important. If you need numbers, in the late 19th century, Paris had only 12 kilometers of sewer pipes, serving a population of over 2 million people. By the early 20th century, the city's sewer system was dumping an estimated 100,000 cubic meters of untreated waste into the Seine River every day. In the 1950s, Paris had one of the highest rates of waterborne diseases in Europe, with over 10,000 cases of typhoid fever reported annually. Did nobody do anything about it? 
When the smell got too intense for the Parisians to bear, people started to take action. One person in particular even wrote a song about the city's infamous poop problem in the 1960s. This person was none other than the popular French comedian Coluche. Paris. Paris poop. Paris poop, 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 poop. Paris. It was a lovely song that he wrote, but because you were not expecting this direction, let's get back to what the people did with the poop problem, other than writing, rehearsing, and singing sarcastic songs. Well, the most major thing that happened was the birth of the hashtag Je suis dans la Seine, which translates to I poop in the Seine. And it sounds absurd, but this hashtag gained people's notice almost instantly. It was clear to the people now that the more they used the bathroom, the more their poop would flow into the waters of Seine. So, because no one can just stop using the bathroom, they did the best possible thing that they could do, highlighting the issue to the masses and the government. I mean, a single person or two could ignore the hashtag, not the masses. Thousands of people could not just say, Oh, don't worry about the poop on the streets, it's just a little added charm to our historic neighborhood. Anyway, finally the government did take action. And the credit for it goes, no, not to people, but to the Olympics 2024. It is unexpected, but it is true. Because France was hosting the 2024 Olympics, in Paris, the city had to be cleaned. Otherwise, the athletes would have underperformed, high on the smell of poop. Thankfully, France couldn't bear the idea of global embarrassment. Paris is the capital of France. The whole image of France depends on it. I mean, it always has, but better late than never. Now the main thing is, if the government couldn't risk damaging the historic buildings and streets of Paris even for cleaning the city and its river, what changed? How did the government of France resolve the poop problem without damaging the beauty of Paris now? The Seine River, the iconic symbol of Paris. For over a century, swimming in the Seine has been a big no-no. And the reason for this is, as you must have guessed, Paris's poop problem. The river was not clean. It was home to turds and a whole lot of diseases. And the Olympic athletes had to swim in it. Only the swimmers, not all of them. So the government had to clean the river. But while the right method was to clean the city first and the river afterward, the government had a bit of a passive approach. In fact, the government was more towards a temporary fix, cleaning the river for the Olympics. So in 2015, government and private organizers invested $1.5 billion to get the Seine ready for the Olympics and to give Parisians a cleaner river to enjoy after the games. To clean the river, a giant underground water storage basin was constructed in central Paris. This was a major undertaking, but it was necessary to help reduce the number of pollutants that were flowing into the river. The sewer infrastructure was renovated as well. Instead of changing it or upgrading it entirely, the government changed it enough so that it no longer put sewage into scene. And finally, the wastewater treatment plants were upgraded to ensure that the water flowing into the river was clean and safe for swimming. This project of 1.5 billion was started in 2015, and it is 2024 now. So did it work? Did the temporary fix hold? And if it did, how long will it work before Paris is all smelly and poopy again? Before the Olympics, the government of France declared that the river was clean and pure. And it should have been obvious to the Parisians already because of the lack of smell in the city, but they wanted concrete proof. Clearly, they were aware of all the turds that they were sending to the river Seine throughout the years. Convincing them was bound to be hard. But no big problem for the mayor of Paris. She knew what she had to do, and trust me, she had to do a lot to win the trust of Parisians and the rest of the world. What did she do? Paris Mayor Anne Hidalgo took a dip in the Seine River to show that it is clean. When she took a dip, she came out clean and smiling, beaming with pride, and no poop sticking onto her toothsome smile either. The Seine is exquisite, she said from the water. The water is very, very good. A little cool, but not so bad. It's very cool, very, very nice, and uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. A dream. Now after this, there was no doubt left. Evidently the Seine really was clean, or she was a very good actress delivering an exceptional performance. But we will get to this later. First, let's talk about another person who was thrilled about the Seine's transformation. This was Paris 2024 chief Tony Estanguet, who has three Olympic gold medals in canoeing. 
After 20 years of doing sports in the river, I find it admirable that we are trying to clean it up, he said. Keep in mind that this was all before the Olympics 2024. So did this fix hold till and after the Olympics? Were the swimmers able to swim through Sein without getting sick? When the time for the 2024 Paris Olympics came, a time for athletic triumph and national pride, the $1.5 billion did not hold well. Swimmers feel sick after diving in the river, although the Paris Organizing Committee was quick to point out that there was no established link between the Seine and the athletes falling ill, it is very likely that they become sick because of the river. I mean, it's hard to ignore the fact that some Olympians did get sick after taking a dip in the river. Four triathletes, to be exact, came down with illnesses after competing. In fact, Belgium was forced to withdraw from a mixed relay event after Claire Michelle fell ill with GI symptoms. And though she clarified that the cause was a virus, it's hard not to wonder if the Seine was somehow involved. It is very likely that the DIP from the mayor was just a stunt. The river was clean, true, but it was not clean enough for the swimmers to risk their health in it. Also, not all athletes fell sick. Sharon Van Rauendaal, the women's gold medalist in the open water race, even took a few gulps of the river water during her race, saying it was cold and nice. Could it be that she was made to do and say this? Even the Irish swimming gold medalist, Daniel Whiffen, passed off concerns about the water quality and said that the readings he saw ahead of the men's race showed less E. coli in the Seine than one would normally find in a pool. But let's be honest, he's no expert on parasites and bacteria. After all, American triathlete Seth Ryder joked about building up his immunity to E. coli by intentionally exposing himself to the bacteria before the race. He said that he knew there would be harmful bacteria in the river, so he built immunity before taking a dive in it. And German open water swimmer Leonie Beck fell ill after competing. She even took her anger out by posting a sarcastic message on Instagram about the Seine's water quality. All in all, it's hard to say whether the Seine was truly to blame for the athletes' illnesses. One thing's for sure, the 2024 Paris Olympics will be remembered as the games where the river stole the show, and Paris will go down in history for its $1.5 billion poop problem.